Guys, I have a question for you. Is your tractor an investment? Can you sell it in the future for what you paid for it in the past? Well, I'm gonna give you my thoughts on that subject as well as share 10 ways that you can maximize the value of your tractor for years into the future. I'm gonna save the most important tip for last. You're gonna wanna make sure you stick around for that. If you like what you see here, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you and hit that subscribe button right down below if you wanna get more cool tractor videos in your inbox. And make sure you read through that description right underneath the video as well. Gonna be all sorts of helpful links right down there for cool tractor products or head on over to GoodWorksTractors.com. Now, before we get to those top 10 ways to maximize the value of your tractor, I gotta go over my thoughts on if a tractor is actually a good investment. And if you wanna have a little fun, we're gonna change one detail in the background of the video between the beginning and the end. So stick around and see if you can find out what it is. If so, leave a comment below. Okay, so my take on an investment, you know, from a monetary standpoint, you can sure do a lot better than putting your money into a tractor strictly if you're looking to make money. However, you can view an investment in a lot of different ways, right? It's doing the job when you want to. It's doing it the way you want to get it done. It's having the equipment sitting there, saving the money from hiring other contractors to do it. So there's a lot of different variables that come into play. There's trade-offs to be made as with anything in life. However, if you go into it with a mindset of a depreciating asset, kind of like a car, you're really going to do most of the time quite a bit better in your return or maybe minimizing your loss compared to driving a car for 10 years when putting 200,000 miles on it and then selling it. You're gonna do a lot better with a tractor over time. Let me give you an example here. I pulled some numbers off of tractor data just for the raw tractor itself, a John Deere 3032E. In 2008, it was around 13.6. So add three grand for a loader, you're at 16.6 in 2008 for that tractor, brand new. Now, if you go to John Deere's website right now and you look up the MSRP of the 3032E, it's still in production. It's like 21.5, okay, without a loader. So add four grand now because the loader price has gone up as well. So you're at 25.5, okay? So you see how much, just call it 16.5, to 25.5, that's nine grand the price has increased uh, compared to 2008 to 2021. And don't take my word for it, the information's right online, and if you're looking for used tractors right now, just take a look for those 2008s, 2009s, 2010 model years of the 3032E with a front end loader and hundreds of hours, maybe thousands, they're still going for the mid $15,000, $16,000 mark. Sometimes you can get one a little bit cheaper, but they've basically held their value, those owners, have gotten hundreds or maybe thousands of hours of use out of it, completed all sorts of projects, and then years later, they can sell it for virtually the same price they paid for it new years ago. Of course, you gotta keep some other factors in mind as well. You know, there are gonna be product improvements over time, so the model year of your tractor or the generation of your tractor could change a little bit. A bit of inflation is to be expected as demand is driven up by consumers, you know, cost of the goods, wages, everything. Everybody wants more all the time, right? So you should expect some of those cost increases to occur over time. A dollar today is worth less than a dollar yesterday. Now to maximize your dollar, maybe even make money when you're selling it down the road versus what you paid for it now, buy used, get something low hours, okay, nearly new, but you're gonna save that initial depreciation hit from paying brand new pricing. Just like a car, tractors are going to depreciate as soon as they get driven off the lot, so to speak. You're gonna lose 10, 15, 20%, depending on what it is. So if you can buy something used, still get all that usable life out of it, you're gonna be that much further ahead. And of course, financing is gonna come at a cost, right? Sure, you don't have to front the cost of the entire tractor and attachments at this point in time however you're going to pay more with finance charges over the course of time now this is just food for thought but knowledge is power so it's up to you how you use it now let's get to that top 10. we're going to go ahead and fly through these these are cheap these are easy anybody can do them there's no reason not to first of all don't abuse your machine I told you this was simple, right? But don't do this. Don't beat up your bucket like that. Don't use it like it's not supposed to be used, okay? Treat a tractor, yeah, they're tough, right? I get it, I get it. It's a tractor, it's meant to be used and handle dirty, nasty, difficult projects. It saves your back, it makes life easy, it makes it quicker, but you know what? You damage things like this. Sometimes I get buckets in that are mangled a lot worse than this. I replaced this bucket because this bothered me right here, all right? So I just didn't like it. We probably could straighten it out if we wanted to, but it's going to lower the value of your machine. So don't wrap a chain around a bucket like this. Get some bucket hooks, find some other way to go about it. You're losing value doing this. Now this is just one example of abuse, but the point being, you're not only going to lower the value of it, but you're probably gonna shorten the lifespan of your tractor as well. Touch up those points of contact. Whether it's on your bucket, it could be the side of your mower deck, maybe a backhoe, 
maybe your three point arms even. Your manual will even tell you to do that. If you have bare steel, just hit it with some uh, spray paint here. You know, I would suggest putting green on green and orange on orange or black on black, but you pick the color you want, right? But the point being, if it's in your manual, just go ahead and do it. Yeah, that paint is gonna disappear on your bucket. If you're putting it in rock piles and dirt piles over and over, guess what? It's just gonna happen, it's gonna wear off. But one of the ways you can extend the life of your equipment is just to touch it up, all right? Especially if you take your bucket off or your backhoe or your mower deck for the entire winter, you know, and it's just sitting there bare metal, exposed, that's no good, no bueno. So touch it up, get it covered, protect it, extend the life, keep that value. Not to mention, it's gonna look better too. Use caution with your machine, all right? That's these knucklehead moves, all right? So if you have a canopy on your machine, you're driving through the woods, you're whacking on a limb, break the canopy, knucklehead move, all right? If you have to trailer your equipment from point A to point B, pay attention to where you're tying it down, okay? You don't wanna put chains or straps on top of the hydraulic cylinders. Find the right points on your tractor to tie it down the right way to prevent damage, prevent paint scuffing. Believe it or not, people actually care what their equipment looks like, not just how it functions. So everything matters, it all adds up. If you got a big brush pile and you ram a stick right through the front of your grill, knucklehead move, right? Go slow on your tractor, pay attention to your surroundings. These things aren't built for speed. If you need a proper method or a manner of securing your tractor to your trailer, check out mudscustoms.com. They've got a really good solution for a lot of the John Deere tractors. They're probably gonna come out with some solutions as well for Kubotas in the future. Check them out, mudscustoms.com, 5% off with code GWT. Store your equipment indoors, or at least under a cover. I don't care if it's a tarp or a carport, or a lean-to, something to keep it out of the elements, all right? This is one of those forms of sneaky damage. It's just gonna lower the value of your tractor over time. It could just be the paint that fades, but it could be hoses or tires, other rubber or plastic materials that are gonna get brittle and just slowly split apart over time. This is something I've used myself as a negotiating point when I've purchased tractors from other dealers. That's what I do. I purchase all sorts of tractor trade-ins from other dealers. And one of the reasons that I turned down a lot of equipment is based on its cosmetic appearance because I know if it was stored outdoors, it could have a lot more issues potentially. Don't get me wrong, tractors are made to be used outside all the time, so I get it. So they're not gonna just fall apart because they're outside, but it's something to keep in mind. People are gonna pay a premium for shiny, green or orange, just brightly colored equipment that's crisp and fresh versus faded, kinda ugly, second rate tractors. Think about it this way. If you've got two tractors, everything else is identical about them besides this one sat outside for 10 years, this one was stored inside. They're the same price, which one are you going for? <laughs> no brainer, right? So even if the shiny one is 500 or 1,000 bucks more versus the faded ugly one, you get my point. You get where I'm going with this. You're going to have more value for your equipment. So even if you have to pay money to keep it covered, some investment there could make a return in the future. Keep it clean. I told you this stuff was simple, anybody can do it, and I mean it, but you'd be amazed how many people choose not to. All these products right here are too clean equipment. You don't have to do it often, maybe once every three months, maybe at the end of mowing season, at the end of the fall, maybe once a season, you get the idea. So keep some products on hand. Obviously you can see this is very important to us. We do it with all the equipment we have here. We want it to look nice and clean and sparkly for you guys when you come in and buy it or we ship it out to you. It's a simple step like this that could add value to your equipment over time. It'll keep you more in tune with your equipment as well. You'll know where there's little bits of damage or wear points or signs of concern. So scrubbing your tractor periodically is gonna make you the envy of the neighborhood. Don't push the limits with your machine, all right? That's a way that a lot of damage happens when you are constantly overloading it. You know, you always think, yeah, I can squeak it out with that machine right there. Go up to the next size, I'm telling you. Why do you think I get all these trade-ins? Because most folks are constantly switching up to something larger. They don't buy the right size to begin with. That log you wanna grapple, that round bale, that pile of rock, whatever it is, you always think it's not as big as it's gonna end up being. So give yourself more capacity, there's no reason at all to push the limits of your tractor. It could put you in a dangerous spot. It's gonna wear out your machine faster and you're not gonna maintain the value that you want. Simple maintenance is gonna extend the longevity. Again, not rocket science. Hit your grease circs all along your loader periodically on the three-point hitch on your back, on your mower deck. Check your air filter, change your oil, 
you get the idea. This stuff is simple, guys. It'll extend the life of your equipment. If you can keep those service records, that's always a bonus. I know a lot of the dealers handle this kind of service for you, so if you can pull records from there. If you're doing the service yourself, it would be awesome to keep a logbook just of those records, the dates that you do it, just to kind of have it jotted down when you go to sell your equipment, which a lot of you don't think you're going to. Believe me, a lot of you are going to end up selling it, okay? You'll have that record there to give to the future owner. They can see at least a documentation, a paper trail there of all the times I've been serviced throughout the course of ownership. I don't see that very often, but I'd sure love to see it more. Now these next two kind of go hand in hand, right? It's the whole general theme. You gotta buy it right and you gotta sell it right. So don't just go giving your tractor away when it's time to get rid of it just because you don't wanna deal with it. That's what a lot of folks do, and I take trade-ins here myself. I totally understand it though, I get the concept. Selling stuff is kind of hard, it's kind of a pain to do. You listed on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, somebody says they're gonna show up, they don't. You know, somebody else says they want you to hold it, they come two weeks later, it, it can be a mess. I totally get it, and that's why a lot of folks end up trading in their equipment. I get a lot of trade-ins here myself, and that's okay. You just gotta realize you're not gonna get nearly as much money as you could if you went through the hassle of selling it on your own. Now on the flip side, you gotta buy it right to begin with. So don't go overpaying just because you see the shiny green or orange paint. Make sure you negotiate the price accordingly. That's again where I say buying it used is always gonna help you come out ahead if you can do so. And of course, Paying cash is also gonna push you in the driver's seat, literally. And last but not least is the most important of all. Friends don't let friends use their tractor. I say that in jest, but I have seen quite a few comments down below in the videos where people have loaned their tractors out to family or friends and they come back in not the most pristine condition. As long as you're in that driver's seat, I'm pretty sure you know how it's being treated. But if somebody else is sitting up there, do you really know what's going on? So I'll let that be a judgment call on your part. Well, that's a wrap, guys. So, really quick, did you figure out what changed from the beginning to the end of the video? We made it a little bit tougher this time. My take on if a tractor is a good or a bad investment, a lot of different ways to look at it. You know, you've got to decide for yourself if that's a good investment to make, if you want to finance, if you want to buy new, if you want to pay cash, all those decisions. How many different projects can you use it for? How many tasks around the home? going to be a year-round kind of machine that you can use and save from hiring out all sorts of services. There's just so much that goes into a decision like that and I just want to help kind of guide you and give you some different things to think about as you're on your tractor journey. As always, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you and hit that subscribe button right down below if you haven't done so already. And make sure you read through the description as well. All sorts of helpful links down there for tractor owners or head on over to goodworkstractors.com. Thanks so much for taking the time to stop by. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.